For lesson 103 today, we're going to be talking about algebraic expressions. We're also going to be multiplying uh, positives and negatives. And we're going to teach you some shortcuts there for knowing what the sign of an answer is if you're multiplying uh, multiple factors together. So first objective is we're going to determine whether the sign of the product of three or more factors is positive or negative. We're going to raise a negative number to a power. And then we're going to work uh, our way into expressions, dividing terms by moving parts, pairs, excuse me, pairs of factors equal one, and using two methods to find the square root of a monomial. Monomial just means it's an expression that has one term. Let's work with these negative numbers. When we've worked with these before, I've always told you to go from left to right, which is fine. Uh, you've got negative three times negative four is positive twelve positive 12 times positive 5 would be positive 60. Positive 60 times negative 2 would be negative 120. And negative 120 times positive 3 would be negative 360. Now that's fine to uh, go left to right. It would be nice though if we found a shortcut to know exactly what our sign is going to be and then just worry about grouping the numbers however we wanted to. So I want you to take a look at this next slide and see if you can determine a pattern. Okay, so if we have obviously one negative number, your answer is going to be negative. If you have a negative times a negative, we know it ends up being a positive. If you have a negative times a negative times a negative, your answer ends up being negative. If you have four negative numbers multiplied together, then you end up being positive and five. So as you can see over here when we're looking at the odds and evens, if you have an odd number of factors and they are negative, an odd number of negative factors, your answer ends up being negative. If you have an even number of factors, then your answer ends up being positive. So let's go back to our original slide here. If I didn't want to go left to right and multiply and try to remember the sign as we went, I could see here that I have one, two, three negatives. That's an odd number. So that means my answer is going to be negative. And then I could have grouped these factors however I wanted. I could have, I think I would have done 12 times 10, which is 120, and then taken that times three, and that would have gotten me the negative 360. So you can use this shortcut with the patterns. I have written that out. This is your first note that I would like you to put under your heading lesson 103. If the number of negative factors is even, the product is positive. If the number of negative factors is odd, then the product is negative. So that should be a very helpful uh, hint that you can go ahead and write in your notes. Once you're done with that then, let's take a look at some more examples here. First of all, if I just look at my negative uh, factors, my answer is going to be positive. However, there is a really key one in here, and that is the number zero. We know that multiplying anything times zero is going to get you zero as an answer, so you don't even need to proceed and try to figure out if it's positive or negative. This answer would just be zero. All right, so for number one in your notes, um, let's take a look at this. If you wrote out these factors, you have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. You obviously have an even number of factors, so your answer is going to be positive. And then I would like you, for number 1, to figure out what positive answer will be for 2 to the, excuse me, negative 2 to the fourth power. For number two then, I would like you to figure out what negative two to the fifth power would be. So that would be negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. Okay, our, we have a odd number of negative factors, so our answer is going to be negative and go ahead and figure out that. So that's for number one and that is number two. All right, now we're going to switch gears here a little bit um, and go into 
some expressions. Remember, expressions are a mixture of numbers and letters. And we're going to factor and simplify these. And then we're going to figure out how to find the square root of expressions. So when we're talking about factoring and simplifying, when you talk about factoring, you're going to basically find the prime factorization of your number, so 2 times 2. And then write out the letters. You can expand out a to the third, which would be a times a times a. And b squared would be b times b. That's all over a times b. So we just factored them out, and now we didn't just simplify them. Well, we can cancel between the numerator and denominator just like we do with numbers. So this a will cancel out that a, and this b will cancel out that b. Now let's see what we're left to have this um, expression simplified. So we have 2 times 2, which is 4. We have a times a, which is a squared. And we have b. So that would be this form simplified. Let's take a look at another one. Again, write out the prime factorization of your number. So 10 is 2 times 5. We have a times a times a times b times c times c. Put that all over. 8 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times a times b times c times c. Okay, let's cancel out what we can. We've got one set of 2's we can cancel. We have a set of a's. Remember, we are canceling between the numerator and the denominator. Um, a set of b's. And then we can cancel out two sets of the c's. For the numerator, then, that leaves 5 times a squared over 4. Some people, then, will simplify to 1.25 a squared. Typically, when you're doing the linear expressions, you will leave it looking like this for right now. Okay, let's go to um, number, I'm sorry, that's out of order here. Let's go to number, there we go, number 3. I would like you to factor out this expression and then cancel it to simplify it to its simplest form. That will be number 3 in your notes. All right, then one more section here. Um, a not monomial, again, a monomial just means I only have one term. I don't have any terms that are being added or subtracted here. I just have multiplication. A monomial is a perfect square if its prime factorization can be separated into two identical groups of factors because we know that taking a number times itself means that you've squared it. So let's write this out, uh, the prime factorization. For, so for 36, that would be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 and then factor out the y squared. Now if you look at this, can you separate these factors into two identical groups? Well, of course we can. We can take a 2 times 3 times y. So let's go ahead and cross those out. We use those. 2 times 3 times y. And we are left with 2 times 3 times y. So we have just figured out that this is a perfect square because we can separate the factors into two identical groups. If I had to find the square root of this then, that would just be one of these groups. The square root of 36y squared is 2 times 3 times y, which simplifies to 6y. Okay, now they've given us a multiple choice, and they want to know which ones are perfect squares. Well, definitely we have even exponents, so we could break those up into two equal groups. We could have an x in one group and an x in the other group. We could have y squared in one group, y squared in one the other group. The key, though, is can you split 8 up into two equal groups? Well, the prime factorization of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. You cannot. So that cannot be a perfect square. Okay? 
let's try the next one. While 4 is a perfect square, I could split that up into 2 times 2. We've got x times x, and then we've got y. Well, that cannot be a perfect square because I don't have two y's to split up into the two different groups, so that would not be a perfect square. Let's try the 36. Uh, we know that the square root of 36 is 6, so I could put a 6 in each group. I can put an x in each group, and I could put a y squared in each group. As you can see, 36x squared y to the fourth is a perfect square because I can break it up into two identical groups multiplied together to equal the 36x squared y to the fourth. So for number four then in your notes, I would like you to find the square root of this monomial. Again, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it is a perfect square, so it will come out to two identical groups. To find the square root, it would be one of those groups would be the square root. That will be number four in your notes, and then come to class, and we'll do the practice set in class today.